technically I wouldn't call them socks, they're more like liners, boot liners. And I know people who have been here since the early 50s, they came up here originally as teachers out in the bush, who were given these at, on regular intervals as, uh, as exactly that, as liners. So they would put moss in the bottoms of their boots, put the liners in, put a little more moss on top of that, and wear socks if they had them or not. But they were very practical in wicking away a lot of moisture and still holding air to keep your feet warm. So incredibly practical. My name is Tom Bennett. I'm curator and museum manager for the Alaska Heritage Museum at Wells Fargo. After I came back from St. Petersburg and visiting the May Museum over there, I came back with newer ideas, you know, for weaving grass socks. I okay. You might. <laughs> yeah. So while I was over there studying the grass socks that they had, many of the objects that we saw were behind glass and I was just so blessed when they took the grass socks out of glass. My name is June Simeonov Pardue and I'm a basket weaver. I skin sew and do a lot of beadwork and paint as well. My name is Sophia Shia. I'm the daughter of uh, June Pardue. I have five kids, three daughters and two sons and I'm a weaver as well, and but I'm also um, an avid fisherman and hunter. In the early 1960s that I began basket weaving, my mother noticed that I was interested. She was taking lessons from Fedosia Inga in Old Harbor Village. Fedosia on the island was the basket weaver. I had an interest in it. I sat on the floor picking up their scraps, and when they noticed that you know, that I was really wanting to learn how to weave baskets. They moved me from the floor to the table. I would say that these little socks that, that are made for children would have been people who are traveling, maybe from another village to another. This is, like you say, a moisture barrier. First you have a, you, either a rabbit or a sea otter liner, oh, and then you put yeah. the sock, the grass sock, over it, and then you slip your foot into the boot. So. Can you just imagine men going out in their kayaks and oh. needing to keep their feet warm? Yes. Yeah. So Absolutely. That's I'll bet you they water. had more than one pair, you know, because uh, I can remember as a child having to take mine off my feet and they would have to dry them before we could use them again. So I imagine men traveling had a couple of pair of these. I was always interested in uh, weaving baskets out of grass, and if I didn't have people around me who were constantly weaving or if I was near a museum, I would go into their collections to study or even check books out of libraries that had anything to do with uh, weaving with grass. My eyes, my mom's the best weaver um, and the best teacher too. I'm really fortunate to, to have her because she's always learning, which means when I go to her house, I'm always learning. But what really stood out to me was that each time that they wove a stitch, one of these strands was also twisted was for added for, strength. For strength and maybe durability? Yes. Could you tell? Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I think it was. You know, so it, I wasn't just twisting my twining weavers, mm. but I was t twisting each piece of grass that I handled. You know, and so I'm going to be sure to do that every time I weave. Uh, the grass socks, like I did in this one right here. Did that add a lot of time to what you were? It added more time. Yeah, it takes time to twist each strand that you're working with. And she can look at the socks and, and see in her mind, I think, of how it's supposed to be done, you know, through, and then through trial and error, very little error, I think, <laughs> she can get it done and then she'll sit with me and, ha or, and have me watch her. And that's how I learn is I have to watch because this is a larger pair, mm -hmm. I had to work my decreases right here and also right here. I had to draw it in, is what I had oh, to do. Wonderful. And then pull it in along in here as well. A lot of it is, is by um, uh, trial and error. The first pair that I tried were oh, just I so misshapen. you had to redo them a few times and <sighs> they go were back so, and They were so misshapen you know, that I had, and by the time I got done practicing on those, they weren't worth even keeping, so they're tacked on a wall at home. That's great. As a reminder for me. <laughs> <laughs> you know. And then she'll say, here, you try, you know, and so I'll try to do what she had done, and if it's not right, then she'll go and undo it and have me try again, or 
or show me again. Yeah, anything that we do that uh, is cultural, we, we do love to have the children, or children around because they learn through observation. Yeah, the girls, my girls, I have three daughters and they, could, they hang around, you know, and watch. My oldest daughter, I think that she's gonna, she'll be a weaver one day. She's got nice, pretty long fingers and mm -hmm. she's into things like artsy stuff, so. Yeah. This tiny little basket is meant to be sitting on glass so that people could view the bottom of the basket. So let me tip it over for you to take a look at it. Okay, it's got the beautiful red design on there. And I like using real bright colors because it really stands out. We are at the Alaska Native Heritage Center in Anchorage, Alaska, and this basket was purchased by them for their collections. I, I, I usually don't count the stitches. I just go with the flow and, um, there was a time when I did, but it's like, I, no, not interested in counting stitches. <laughs> mm -hmm. I made this back in 1999. It's made out of raffia. I actually had um, traded this basket with my stepfather for one of his knives. He makes knives out of ivory and, and whatnot. So this was a trade between him and I. And, um, it's got the embroidery floss in here and some open weave there. But yeah, so I made it quite a while ago. It's one of the, the bigger woven pieces that I have done. Mom lives right across the street, so at night when she has her curtains closed, we'll see her silhouette at the window, and we know that behind that curtain she's weaving, and it's really comforting to know what's going, just to see Mom and know she's doing what Mom does, and that's beautiful baskets. Thank you, Sophia. Yeah. <laughs>